Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. Hello and welcome to another Rogue Trader video. And today I'm doing a stock analysis update on ITM Power PLC. ITM Power manufacture proton exchange membrane electrolyzers for the production of green hydrogen. Hydrogen is probably going to be a key part of the world's net zero strategy. They have some important partnerships with Shell, Lind and SNAM. And unlike a lot of other renewable stocks, they actually have a massive factory manufacturing off the shelf PEM electrolyzers. They've just built the Bessemer Park Gigafactory in Sheffield and they're targeting 2.5 gigawatts by 2023 and have actually just started the planning to build a new gigafactory in addition to the Bessemer Park one. They currently make units at a loss with a hope that when they scale up to, when they scale up with the factories operating at full capacity, the economies of scale will mean they'll then be able to manufacture at a profit. They're sitting on a massive pile of cash. They've got 364 million, all from capital raisers, but they've got quite a nasty cash burn at the moment of about 52 million. Now, I already did a video on ITM Power about a year ago, and that's got a lot of detail if you want to go and look at that. This video is going to be more of an update of, th of things that have happened since then. They've got three main applications of their technology that seem to be going somewhere at the moment. The first of them is using grid electricity to make hydrogen for transport refueling. They've just set up a 50-50 joint venture with Vital. So this is the Motive website. And what they typically do is they just have in local areas, normally a local council will decide that because they want to be green, they'll use some of your council tax money to buy a load of EV buses and then they'll pay Motive in order to run the refueling stations for those buses. They've, they've actually got not that many refueling stations at the moment in the UK. That's why it kind of makes sense for ITM Power to be making 240 gigawatts of new stations because then they're kind of creating a market, even though if it's at a cost for ITM Power to start with. See the different things they do here. And there is potential for trains and ships to be fueled by hydrogen. But currently, I think the main uses are is car fleets for businesses that they decide to uh, make their make their car fleets hydrogen powered and buses where local councils use taxpayer money to uh, to set up a load of hydrogen buses something i noticed on their website was this station closure part and there was great fanfare when there was a partnership of shell for itm power to install electrolyzers at different shell garages the idea being that if loads of people started driving hydrogen cars they'd be filling them up at the shell garages it seems that some of these shell garage locations are closing down so that doesn't really bode well generally for the use of hydrogen in cars so this is their this is one of the three main use cases for their products which doesn't actually seem to be going that well, but they have set up this, but they have set up this joint venture with Vital and they're going to be building 240 megawatts of electrolyzers, kind of at a loss to try and create a market. Then the second main usage for their electrolyzers is when you get grid electricity and use it to manufacture green hydrogen at industrial sites. Now, particularly in the ammonium manufacture and refining industries they use a lot of hydrogen and currently they're reforming methane so it's attractive for them to help with their net zero stats and stuff to actually use a itm power electrolyzer to manufacture that hydrogen on site rather than reforming methane and this is actually where a lot of their success is coming at the moment in this application and then the other main use is where you have wind turbines 
and you use them to generate green hydrogen to use either locally or for export. Now the flagship project for that is the Gigastack project and this is where they have some uh, wind turbines. The problem with wind power is it only generates the electricity when the wind's blowing. So a lot of the time they generate electricity when it's not actually needed. And so the idea is, is that when that happens, you have a electrolyzer, which then produces hydrogen. Now for this project, that hydrogen is then used in a oil refinery close by. But actually, in the majority of cases, um, it will be in remote wind farm locations. And then, the, and then that hydrogen is then stored locally and then shipped around the world to where it's needed, which could be in, uh, for transport refueling or it could be for industrial uses. Now, the actual wind turbine to green hydrogen use, this is the one that makes the most sense to me. And they have had some success here. But the, majority, but the majority of their revenues now are coming for industrial use. So looking at their history, and in January of 2017, they raised 5.7 million in a capital raise. And then there was big news at the end of 2017 when the Shell Refine project was announced. And this refine project is using grid, is using grid electricity for use in their oil refinery. And that was a 10 megawatt announcement. Then in 2019, they announced that they were going to build a gigafactory. And hot on the heels of that was the announcing of the Hornsey 2 Gigastack project, which I just showed you. So phase one was only a five megawatt electrolyzer. Then towards the end of 2019, they announced a big partnership with Lind and they raised 59 million in a capital raise, of which Lind bought 32 million of those shares. Now, this is a massive milestone in ITM's story. Lind are an absolutely huge industrial gas company, and it's really important that they achieve this partnership with Lind, who have the customers to sell to. And it was good that Lind put their money where their mouth was by making this 32 million investment. Then in late 2020, they raised another 172 million in a capital raise. And as a part of that, they formed a partnership with SNAM, who themselves invested with 30 million of shares. Now, SNAM are a massive Italian company. They're, in, they're into natural gas transportation, storage and regasification. Now, although SNAM are a large company, I've not really seen much news come out uh, from their partnership with SNAM. However, with Lind, there have actually been quite a few fireworks coming out of that partnership. Now, in 2020, this was when the green new future and uh, renewables really came into the forefront. In January, the EU announced their Green New Deal, where they're actually going to be spending a quarter of their budget on climate change. And then in November, Joe Biden was elected and he promised 1.7 trillion of government money to be spent on uh, achieving net zero. Boris Johnson, he pledged a trillion to spend on this problem. Now, here are four renewable stocks and you can see. And I've spent time looking at all of these and I can. And to me, I'd score ITM power and series power as uh, six out of ten. Whereas I'd say AFC Energy and Powerhouse Energy were one out of 10. But what we can see, what happened in 2020 was, regardless of how good these companies were, or whether they were selling anything, or the stock prices went up massively for all renewable stocks. Because renewables were all the great big new thing, all the asset managers went in and invested loads in renewable stocks apparently regardless of the quality. So we see a massive stock price bubble in all cases, which then got popped and they've all been in decline ever since 20, ever since the beginning of last year. So this is how I explain the rapid increase in ITM Power's share price. They actually had loads of positive news, unlike some of the others, 
Um, but regardless of positive news, before January 2021 or after 2021, the share price just followed this same pattern of all the renewable stocks. It's just like a investment bubble and then that bubble bursting. And so that's why counter to the negative share price, there was some really good news at the beginning of 2021 for ITM Power. They started production at their Gigafactory and they announced, thanks to their partnership with Lind, the sale of a 24 megawatt unit for this lunar complex. Now, this was actually the largest electrolyzer in the world when it was built. So that is quite impressive. And then midway through 2021, it was announced that there'd been funding. It'd been announced that there'd been EU funding to help enable this Refine 2 project. And for that, they're going to be building a 100 megawatt unit. So that's, uh, I've put here, it's still in grey because it's not a done deal. Uh, in this, the stuff that's uh, full strength is done deals. The stuff that's in grey or lighter shade are stuff that's probably going to happen but isn't totally concrete yet. And the things which are black, those are projects that were announced before I did my first video. And the things that are in orange were things that were announced after I did my last video. So this 100 megawatts is a big number, so that's positive. And then towards the end of 2021, they raised another 250 million in a capital raise. Now these slides are from their presentation that they gave to these investors before they invested 250 million in ITM shares. The first big news is they, they plan to spend 305 million to build two more gigafactories, bringing their total manufacturing capacity up to five gigawatts by 2024. They've got their current Bessemer Park factory here. Here's their new one that they're already starting to build now. And then there's even a third one planned. And they gave some forecasts here where they claim that with an 80% utilization rate, they believe they'll have annual sales of 430 million per annum. But I think that's in a 10 year target frame and 64 million EBIT. So at the, begin at the beginning of this year, they announced the sale of another 24 megawatt unit uh, to Lind. And this was for a ammonia plant in Oslo. You know, so again, we see this industrial use case coming true. And then just recently, they announced they had a 9 million government grant. But only yesterday, there was a trading update, which resulted in the share price dropping by 20%. But their interim was at the beginning of the year. And main points with this were, firstly, they were achieving a lot more contract wins. And we saw their work in progress increase to 86 megawatt to 86 megawatts which is quite a big increase from the 20 war from the 21 megawatts in january of the previous year and their contracts backlog was increased to 499 megawatts i should explain that the work in progress that's stuff where the money's going to come in they're already making it whereas the contracts back the contracts backlog isn't actually sales completed it's sales where they're in the final stages of negotiation or where they have preferred supplier status they announced in their interims that um, the government investment again taxpayers money had been secured for phase one of scottish powers 20 megawatt Whitley wind farm hydrogen production facility and that's this project here being finalized and finally, they announced in those interims that cash burn had gone up now to 12 million. So now we move on to yesterday's trading update. And as you can see, that trading update dropped the share price by about 20%. So first of all, they announced an increase in their contracts backlog to 755 megawatts. However, this includes uh, the 240 megawatts going to Motive. So that's where they're kind of selling electrolyzers to their own subsidiary in order to try and of, in order to kind of try and create a market at a loss. And then they announced that this uh, lunar project was delayed 
into the following year, in, into the net, into 2023 for financial purposes. But that's not really that big news for me. But the big shocker in this trading update was they announced cash burn of 52 million. So that is quite a large cash burn. And I think that's why it explains the 20% drop in share price. Now, one, th one thing I noticed, which I haven't seen highlighted anywhere else, is, the, is this RWE Lingen project. So they've achieved this year the sale for four megawatt electrolyzer to Lingen. From, a lot of this actually comes from German government investment, but they seem to be a renewables company with wind farms. Although on their website here, this it looks more like a coal plant than anything else. But anyway, here, but here they clearly say that they're planning to build a 200 megawatt electrolyzer. So that's some uh, considerable potential upside for ITM Power if they could be the if they could be the bidder that's get, that gets awarded this 200 megawatt electrolyzer project. That is actually going to be really good. But currently, they've only announced four megawatts, which pres presumably is then going to be put on trial at RWE. But anyway, that's just the interesting thing that I could not see anywhere, but but discovered when I did my own research. So generally, when I look at the when we look at the trend here of the use cases and their contract awards, it's quite clear that most action is going in is going into industrial uses for the electrolyzers. And there's also quite a positive trend that as we go, as we progress forward in time, we see more contracts being awarded and higher value and higher numbers in the megawatts. So this is all good for ITM, who, whose their whole strategy is about building at increased scale to then make it cost effective. Now, when they raised that 250 million at their fundraise presentation, they, they claimed here, they forecast here that by 2024, they'll, be, they'll have a factory utilization of one gigawatt a year. But when I've got my data here and plotted it, we, we first of all see the kind of lead times involved. So it's typically, so it's typically between one and two years between when the work's announced and the, and the electrolyzer gets delivered. But when I stack up, uh, I should say this doesn't include projects announced before 2021. So that explains the dodgy number for 2022. But these, and they are my very rough estimates um, here, you know, done in a very amateurish way. But for me, I can only see them really producing, let's say, between 0.1 and 0.2 gig of electrolyzers by 2024 and the problem is is that in their fundraiser they were promising one gig by 2024 so i see a bit of a shortfall here between how much they're actually going to be producing in gigawatts in 2024 um, and the one gigawatt that they've promised particularly in light of even if they won all this work there's still a one to two year time lag. For ITM, I do actually see the amount they produce going up to a gigawatt, but I think that there could be a lag between when they're promised it will happen and when it will happen. Looking at the profit and loss, and the first thing is the revenue seem kind of flatlined. You know, I don't really see an increase in revenues. And, but as, as they gen but as they generate more and more electrolyzers and bigger ones, we do see the direct costs go up. Now the direct costs are the costs of actually manufacturing the units they sell. So you, you want to see you want to see the revenues for selling the electrolyzers larger than the costs of making them. Um, and these numbers here tell me that they are currently making them at a loss. And this is obviously bad, 
the whole strategy is that once they start producing at the gigawatt scale and more, then the cost of making them per unit will go down. And so then you should see this direct cost number becoming lower than the revenue. However, a key thing to look for for ITM Power is moving forward, you want to see them making them at a profit with their direct losses being lower than their revenues. And of course, the operating profit and net income really does look bad now. Um, and especially now with their their full year guidance being increased to a cash burn of 52 million. That is, you know, that is kind of bad. You know, they've got this, um, they have got this massive cash pile, but really they need to start turning this round in the next few years before things start getting a bit out of control. Here's their net income history. And first off, just the snapshot of this company at this moment, their net income history looks worse than any other company I've ever looked at. We want to see the, we know that the expenditure is going to keep going up as they sell more electrolyzers, but we want to see the income here narrowing that gap and then eventually exceeding the expenditure. And we want to see the net income trend reversing and starting to go upwards here. When I look at the revenue by business sector, first of all, the grid to hydrogen transport. This is the green line and we see it's kind of now in terminal decline. And so that perhaps explains why now they're kind of almost taking the matter into their own hands by creating the joint venture with Vital and then building the electrolyzers to kind of sell themselves as part of this joint venture. The grid to industrial green hydrogen, this is where they're getting the most action. And that's the blue line here. And you can see this is a good trend that we know from recent announcements is only gonna go higher. And the green hydrogen from wind turbines, that's the red line here. <clears throat> That's the red line here, and it's not been doing very well the last couple of years. However, we know from their announcements that that is going to go up, but I kind of see this as being a bit of a lumpy and less reliable income stream moving forward from what I can see, whereas the industrial is where all their main hopes are. This other here, I don't actually quite understand what that is. My best guess is that this is... This is for consultancy work they do with all the bigger with all the bigger 24 megawatt projects they do and things. I think they achieve quite large consultancy f funds for uh, helping helping set up these projects. And I think that's what that is, but I don't really know what it is for sure. So looking at the assets and debt and the main thing that stands out is most of their assets are just pure cash. Of course, I think it's great when companies have lots of cash. And from their fundraisers, this is now the majority of their assets. I've got a number of 364 million here based on their latest update. It's great, of course, they have no debt. And we see the account payables creep up as they sell and make more electrolyzers. So they have a very interesting valuation profile. Like I said before, all the money was just flooding into the entire renewable sector. And on the back of that, they achieved an incredible price to book of 50 in 2020. That was obviously a crazy share price, but the bubble burst. But they managed to raise, they managed to take advantage of that and raised a lot of cash during that period. And now their price to book is actually four which I think is quite a reasonable valuation, actually. When I compare it to their peers, I actually, um, Reuters, by the way, had their price to book at eight. But when I include the 242 million from their fundraisers, I got a number of four. But they're around similar to Ceres Power, who are very much a peer. These three here, I kind of know that they're all total trash. So that explains their lower price to book.
But overall, I still think the price to book ratio four seems kind of quite good for a renewable stock. So in their statement of cash flows, they rose, they managed to raise 169 million from issuing shares and 4 million from free government money. They lost, which is grants, they lost 20 million just from running the place and uh, 14 million uh, is what they had to make in CapEx investments with a 1.5 million lost to intangibles and half a million investment in joint ventures, which I believe is the motive company. So standalone, this is a very healthy statement of cash flows. So what most impresses me about ITM Power is they've gone out there, they've built the Gigafactory. It's not all talk with them, they're actually doing it. And it is very impressive to me, their ambition and scale. There are here real customers paying real money for their products. Although it worries me that where, however deep you look, there always seems to be government money there. However, there is scope for it to be economically feasible for real ammonia producers and real oil, ref and real oil refineries to be building electrolyzers on site. And in the uh, and in the renewable energy sector as well, there is scope there for um, you know for for them to at site be generating hydrogen in it. And we have been promised by by the IEA and people like that that in the green future there is going to be hydrogen will be a really important part of that. And there is a increased trend of bigger projects and them selling more electrolyzers. The problem is I really can see a lag developing between when between them actually achieving their gigafactory being at full capacity and when they promised that would happen to their shareholders. And the fact is their basic products, they're making at a loss at the moment. So you've got this challenge that they have to be making the electrolyzers at a profit. When they get to the full production capacity of a gigawatt even, and then eventually two and a half gigawatts like they're promised. Plus currently all of these asset managers are running away from renewable stocks just as rapidly as they rushed in back in 2020. So you've got this thing where if you invest in ITM power, the share price is fighting against all of this institutional money draining out of the this sector just as easily as it drained in. But at the end of the day, I just have to keep ITM power in my watch list. The reason being that they're just so dang interesting. The key risks are just too problematic for me, but I really want to keep them in a watch list because I just can't help but watch because I know that whether it's up or down, their future price movements are going to be what I can only describe as extreme violence. They're definitely the best of all the renewable stocks I've looked at, possibly apart from series. But what I find really interesting about them is how they mimic Tesla in being a green manufacturing company with vast ambition and spectacular funding which will enable exponential manufacturing growth. And so they do offer a tantalizing inflection point. And we've got this fund manager crash. On top of that, I think that there could be a lag between their actual production utilization and what they promise the markets. However, there is a trend of winning bigger and more contracts for industrial use for their electrolyzers. So that for me does create a tantalizing inflection point at some point in the future. The main dangers that I've identified are the cost of goods. They've got to start making the electrolyzers at a profit in order for it to be a going concern. They need to 10x their sales in two years to achieve the forecast that they've promised and become profitable due to the economies of scale. And a danger I thought about was if electricity prices increase due to the energy crisis, which actually is in many cases, if you think of nuclear power in Germany, 
caused actually by green policies, ironically enough, then actually their main use case seems uneconomical. So I think electric electricity prices are actually a key thing to look out for in the future of ITM power. Also, competition is a danger, but that you'll see that in their sales. And cash burn is a bit of a yellow flag at the moment in danger of going out of control. The positives are they do have a massive pile of cash that they've raised from all these asset managers and stuff. And they can use that to fund their ambitious plans. And they do have a trend of new and bigger orders. Plus, industrial hydrogen is a use case that could gain traction at scale. And also with the wind turbine projects, I do see that you could actually see a massive uptick in use of the electrolyzers for that purpose. So that concludes my analysis update for ITM Power. I do hope you enjoyed my video and good luck with your own investment journey. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support me, I'm on Patreon. There's a link to my Patreon page in the video description below.